Crohn's disease is a unique chronic condition with recurrent patchy transmural lesions from the mouth to anus, especially in the terminal ilium. Crohn's disease is unique and it can affect any part of the GI tract as opposed to ulcerative colitis which affects only the rectum and the colon. Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disease so it has more systemic side effects than ulcerative colitis and usually there's years of recurrent inflammation. What is meant by transmural is that it involves all the layers of the GI tract and not just the mucosa and submucosa. Upon histology observation, we can see multiple separate areas of the disease which are skip lesions. We can also see non-cachiating granulomas and we can see after sulcers in the mouth and in the esophagus. The linear deep pulses which connect often give the bubble a cobblestone appearance which is a characteristic feature of Crohn's disease. So this occurs because the diseased tissue is depressed and is below the level of the normal mucosa, giving a cobblestone-like appearance. And we can also observe creeping fat, which occurs when the mesenteric fat, the kind that naturally develops in the abdominal area, wraps around the bowel wall, causing it to thicken. So the location of, Crohn so the location of Crohn's disease involves the whole GI tract from the mouth to the anus, but the terminal ileum is the most common site and more than 75% of cases develop within people whose ages are between 11 to 35. Let's take a look at the clinical features and symptoms of Crohn's disease. So chronic inflammatory disease can be seen with diarrhea, sometimes it can be bloody and low grade fever and abdominal mass due to impaired digestion and also weight loss due to malnutrition. Due to intestinal obstruction, we can notice postprandial bloating, cramping pains, and loud boborygmi, which are intestinal rumbling sounds caused due to moving gas. Perianal disease is very common in Crohn's disease because the anus is affected. Anal fissures, fistulization, and abscesses can occur. Patients with CD can develop fistulization due to transmural inflammation, which can lead to epithelialization across the bowel wall. Fistulas are abnormal connections between two epithelialized surfaces. In this case, abnormal connections may form between the bubble and other organs. Erythema nodosum and pyoderma gangrenosum are very common skin conditions in Crohn's disease. So, erythema nodosum are painful nodular erythematous rashes usually seen on shins. So, this is caused by circulating immune complexes which generate a reaction in the fat cells under the skin which leads to a classic nodule formation in histology. We can also see non-cachiating granulomas. Pyoderma gangrenosum is due to abnormal neutrophils. Patients with Crohn's disease will often complain about joint pains, ulcers in the mouth, inflammation in the eye, and hepatobiliary conditions like acute fatty liver. Kidney stones and thromboembolic conditions are also sometimes seen. There are types of Crohn's disease based on the site. So a majority of people, around 40%, have their lesions concentrated in the iliocolonic area and around 30 to 40% in the small intestinal area. And around 20% will have Crohn's colitis and less than 10% will have perianal disease alone. The most common extraintestinal manifestation of IBD is arthritis in large joints. When it affects multiple joints at once, it's called migratory polyarthritis. And when arthritis affects the spine, it's called sacroilitis and spondylitis. This condition can result in severe back pain. During lab investigation in Crohn's disease, the blood test will be positive for ASCA. And sometimes we will have a low serum albumin level due to impaired digestion and a low RBC count and an increase in the ESR and CRP levels, which indicates inflammation and a stool sample may show blood in stools. These are some pictures of the gross pathology of Crohn's disease. Figure A represents a small intestinal stricture and B shows some linear mucosal ulcers and thickened intestinal wall and the cobblestone appearance. And C shows creeping fat or fat wrapping around the intestines. When observing microscopic pathology of Crohn's disease, in, we can see some crypts being formed and in B, we can see non-cachiating granulomas. And in C, we have a slide of transmural Crohn's disease with submucosal and serosal granulomas. 
This is a barium follow through showing terminal ileal Crohn's disease and we can see strictures the locations A and B which are caused due to intestinal obstructions. This is known as the characteristic string sign in Crohn's disease. These are some more imaging of the small bowel in Crohn's disease. In A we can see an ulcerated stricture with pre-stenotic dilation. And in picture B, we can see an endoscopy picture of an ileal ulcer in a patient with Crohn's disease. And in C, we can observe a bowel wall thickening of the terminal ileum and active inflammation. And in picture D, it's another capsule endoscopy showing ileal Crohn's disease stricture. So to sum up the complications of Crohn's disease, we can see some abscesses and fistulas and colonic cancer and when the entire bowel wall is swollen or inflamed it can narrow the lumen which can appear as fibrotic strictures. All of these complications can lead to the patient presenting with tender abdominal mass, fever, leukocytosis, perianal disease, hemorrhage, malabsorption and weight loss. Let's take a look at the differential diagnosis of Crohn's disease. The number one differential diagnosis is ulcerative colitis which is very similar to Crohn's disease. Intestinal lymphoma is another differential diagnosis and the gold standard to differentiate intestinal lymphoma from Crohn's disease is to do a colonoscopy biopsy. Intestinal tuberculosis is another very important differential diagnosis. Upon biopsy histological observation, we can observe cachiating granulomas in intestinal tuberculosis and non-cachiating granulomas in Crohn's disease. So we can use this difference to differentiate Crohn's disease from intestinal tuberculosis. And other differential diagnoses include colon cancer, ischemic colitis, diverticulitis, and irritable bowel syndrome. Alright, to sum up, this is just a simple diagram showing the main pathological differences between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Though they are very similar, they have some significant differences among them. So now let's go to a recap summary of inflammatory bowel disease. The location of ulcerative colitis is the distal colon with rectal involvement, while in Crohn's disease, the whole GI tract is involved. In ulcerative colitis, the gross morphology will show mucosa and submucosal ulcers with pseudopolyps and the loss of hostra leading to the lead pipe site. And in Crohn's disease, we can observe transmural inflammation, which involves all the layers of the GI tract, which is the cause for fistulas to occur in Crohn's disease. And we can see cobblestone mucosa and bubble wall thickening and the string sign due to strictures, also aphthous linear ulcers and fissures. In ulcerative colitis, upon microscopic morphology in ulcerative colitis, we can see crypt abscesses and ulcers, but no granulomas. While in Crohn's disease, we can see non-cachiating granulomas and lymphoid aggregates. Fulminant colitis, toxic megacolon and perforation are some of the complications of ulcerative colitis. While in Crohn's disease, we can see fistulas and strictures causing more obstruction and also perianal disease. While malabsorption, malnutrition and colorectal cancer are some of the common complications for both. When we speak about the intestinal manifestations, ulcerative colitis patient may present with bloody diarrhea while in Crohn's disease they may or may not have bloody diarrhea. When speaking about the special extraintestinal manifestations, in ulcerative colitis sclerosing cholangitis is very important and in Crohn's disease, kidney stones and gallstones are important. But rash, pyoderma gangrenosum, erythema nodosum, eye inflammation and arthritis is common to both conditions. Right, that's about it for inflammatory bowel disease. If you managed to learn something new, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you would like to learn about any other topic in detail, please do comment down below. That is all. Thank you for watching. Show us your support on Patreon. Subscribe for similar content and click that bell icon. Don't forget to check out this playlist and follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram to stay tuned. Minute Med, where medicine is made fun.